Welcome back here to the Kicks 96.5 Morning Show. We love featuring indie artists on the show, and today we're heading to New York to chat with award-winning singer-songwriter Robbie Hart. Robbie has been on a tear in the indie world. She's a judge at last month's or in August ISA Awards. She's up for some Josie Awards. She's up for multiple Who's Who Awards, and the list goes on and on. She's debuting her brand new single, I Would Still Pick You, this morning, right now, we're always excited to have the one and only, the lovely, the talented, the beautiful, the inspirational Robbie Hart on the show. Thanks so much for coming on, Robbie. Good morning, Jeff. Thank you so much for that beautiful introduction, <laughs> and thank you for having me on today. Yes, thanks for getting up. Uh, well, it's nine there. She's she's, she's on East, Eastern time. Well, first, yeah, congrats. Yeah, I've been up for multiple hours. Yeah, she's, she's <laughs> been up for a while. Well, congrats. You, you and Dennis celebrated your wedding anniversary over the weekend. What'd you do? Um, we just spent some family time. We made some nice meals together. We watched a movie, and we were going to go out to eat, but we figured it would just be nicer to spend time together at home. Uh, I do have to tell you, though, we do have two wedding anniversaries. We did get married twice. <laughs> so uh, September 9th is our first wedding anniversary, and uh, we'll be celebrating our other wedding anniversary in October. So, Yeah, D- double their money is what they got. No, you <laughs> you know, my husband did import me from Canada, so we got married one time for immigration just to get the formality done, and then our wedding was in October. So, oh, were they both in New York? Yeah, they were both in New York. It had to be in New York in order because I was uh, actually brought over on a fiance visa, so we had to get married in New York. But our wedding had already been planned from a year before, so we just got married as soon as I got here. Yeah, because Robbie's originally from Canada, eh? Well, yeah. and, and you know. You got married. You did the whole story. One of her songs called Out of the Blue. If you go listen to that song, it's all about you and Dennis meeting. That's right. Yes. It is. It's, it's a sweet love song. And again, it's it's a dreamy song about, you know, taking a chance and doing something different. And then something amazing happens out of the blue. You know, I traded Paris for paradise and I found love at a Starbucks in Hawaii. Yeah. When, when she says that, you got to read between the lines because she was going to go to Paris for a trip. Instead, she went to Hawaii, and that's where she met Dennis, and the rest is history. You got it. Yes, thank you so much. You nailed it. That's exactly what happened, and it was just God's work, I guess. It was just meant to be that I was supposed to be in Hawaii at Starbucks drinking that coffee at 6 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, wow. Uh, And how many years has it been? Uh, 16. 16. Well, 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 congratulations to both of you. Thank well, you. I mean, the, the who's who, I'm, I'm sitting here looking at this last night, Robbie. She's up for some who's who awards. She's up for songwriter of the year, female vocalist of the year, music video of the year for Too Peter to Be Home, song of the year for Reason to Rise, entertainer of the year. Wow. I, I think you're up for every category. Thank you. Well, not quite, but I am honored <laughs> to be represented in those five categories. And I have to tell you, I was shocked to be nominated as Entertainer of the Year because, as you know, I was uh, sidelined from an accident last year, and I wasn't able to do as many live performances as I had hoped to. And uh, that I was still nominated for that category, I, I'm blown away. So I'm very honored to be represented in those very mean, meaningful categories, Songwriter of the Year, the music video, and my song Reason to Rise, which I'm, I'm very, very proud of. So thank you very much. Yeah, well, well. speaking of playing live, aren't you doing something tonight? I am, I am. I'm going to be playing at Sandin Court tonight at 8.30 p.m. I'm doing a live acoustic set, so come on over and check it out if you're listening in New York. Uh, it's a beautiful place and great live music, so I'll yeah. be playing there tonight at 8.30. Now, now has the Who's Who, because these indie awards are a little different, did they get a hold of you and tell you that you were up for 27 categories? <laughs> No, actually, they posted it online. They did actually. Let me let me correct that. They did a podcast episode where they announced all of the winners yeah. and all of the nominees. And by the way, congratulations to you too, because I know you're on that list as well. Um, so very well deserved. They did a podcast where they went through all of the categories with all of the nominees, and I was blown away to hear my name called several times. And then they did follow it up with a post on Facebook with the. Um, all of the nominees and all of the categories. Yeah, because if it wasn't for you and the Cranberry Merchants, I would have had no idea my internet radio well, station, CBJ Radio, is up for Station of the Year. I had no clue. So you have I would, a fan they, club. They, they, don't, they need to reach out to you, though, because I have no clue that I was. I, I was right. up for, like, the, the, star, the Rising Stars or whatever. You just won that 
as well over the weekend. But I, I was up for that. I had no clue until like the last week, and it was a voting thing. <laughs> they, they, they need to get a hold of you. That, that's my only beef with some of these. I understand uh, that, too, because it's hard if you want to engage your base, right? Well, yeah. You have to have them to vote for you and it's hard if you don't know and I, I don't know why that is or how that comes to play but I think that um, it would work better if everybody was aware so that way of course you could share the information with people and ask them to vote for you yeah and, and Robbie told me because I was like well maybe I'll go to the who's who awards and she and she looked it up and said oh it's a 19 hour drive <laughs> from well, you know I'm not gonna lie though as we were chatting about it it does sound like fun there's Halloween costumes, award show, and karaoke. I mean, how can you go wrong? Oh, how can you go wrong with that? I know how much you love karaoke. <laughs> exactly. You know, you know, I love karaoke. I got, I got a couple songs now that I can sing, so that that might be, might be a good thing. Well, also in August, well, you won two years ago, so you went this year as a judge to the International Singer Songwriters Awards in Atlanta. How did it go? You know what? It was amazing, and for me, on a personal level, as I had mentioned earlier, I had. Uh, been off of music for a couple of months because I was recovering from an uh, injury from an accident and I had decided that August was going to be my goal. I was working toward being at the ISA and I was going to be a presenter and I was going to be a performer and as well as a judge and that was my goal. I had to get myself in in shape to be there, you know, physically. So that was amazing for me. It was a great milestone, and I was so happy to be there. My husband and my daughter came with me. It was just a great event. I was so happy to be there to cheer on all of my fellow indie artists. I got to meet so many new people. It's just such an incredible experience, and it's like family. You go there as a stranger, and you come out of there with family that you didn't know you have. So it's just a really enriching experience, and as always, it's just a great time. Yeah, how was it? I mean, was the pressure off because two years ago you were up for awards. This year you were there as a judge. So, how was the emotions? A little different. You know what? I, I'm going to say I never have. I don't usually feel pressure because I don't look at it as something pressure. I think that it's an amazing honor to be nominated, and if I win, that's an amazing thing. And if not, then I'm happy for whoever did win. So I don't generally feel pressure, but. Um, as far as emotions go, it was just a very emotional thing to be there and to be part of it. And as a judge, you know, it's it's amazing getting to have your voice heard and hopefully that you make somebody's dreams come true. Yeah. We're chatting with Robbie Hart. Robbie Hart with an E H A R T E dot com. Go check her out. She's on Instagram, Facebook, X. She's everywhere. Her brand new single, I Would Still Pick You, comes out on September 22nd. You're going to hear it first this morning. Well, your reason to rise, your daughter, Kayla, we played Reason to Rise earlier. Boy, she's running varsity cross country as a freshman in high school. What, what's yeah. going on here, Robbie? You know, she's doing amazing things. She is truly my inspiration. She's the reason that I push myself. Anytime I think something is really difficult or out of reach, I look at her and I say, there's nothing out of reach. I can do anything because I look at my daughter and she gives me, you know, the wind under my shelves. Uh, she's just amazing. She pushes herself very hard. She's very dedicated to what she does. And uh, she did a running camp all summer. She uh, has been training for weeks before school even started with the team. And we thought she was going to be on the JV team. And she told me, no, mom, I'm on varsity. And I'm like, wow, that's amazing. She loves running. It's a great outlet for her. And I'm just really proud of her. I mean, because when did she start running? This has only been the last couple of years. So she started running when she was nine years old. She started running for a team for athletes with disabilities, and she probably ran about 25 or 35 Ks. That was her That was her thing. She did that for years, and it was an incredible outlet. And as she started junior high, they started um, with the school track team and the cross-country team, and then she ended up just going along with the school practices because it's a lot, you know, it's every day. Yeah. So she started training with, I'm just trying to think now, in September, I guess it was September of seventh grade, she started with the school and she hasn't stopped. So she's done every season of running. Yeah, well, good for her. I mean, I, I think you. she's getting it from her mom because Robbie's an inspiration. <laughs> she inspired me Thank to, to be here. I mean, I, I, it's just, it's, it's incredible. You're always fighting. You're always chasing your dreams. How do you do it? Because you've had so many hurdles the last couple of years. We talked about it before with your accident. I mean, and then you get another accident recently in the last year. How do you stay positive? 
Well, thank you for saying all of that. First of all, it, it means a lot to me that that comes across, that comes through when people think of me, that that's what they think. That is the most amazing thing that I can hear, you know, and I'm so proud that you're out there following your dreams and doing what you love. So thank you so much for sharing that with me. I just look at life from a positive point of view as much as I can. I mean, I'm human. Sometimes I default to, oh my God, why me? <laughs> but it only lasts a split second because I look around and I think of how lucky I am and how blessed I am and that every op- everything that happens is an opportunity to be flipped into something positive. You know, yes, bad things can happen, but we could turn them into something better. We can make them into something that we can learn from, that we can move forward and be better from. And I try to always look at that and I try to instill that in my daughter because it's very easy to say, oh my gosh, why me? Like my daughter right now, she's going through health issues for the last few years and um, she's had many challenges. And I'm just so inspired by her perseverance and, and her strength. And I think that it's very easy to say, oh, poor me. But then I look at people who have very bad and they think, how dare I complain about my situation? I still have my freedom. I still have my health. I still have, you know, all of these things at my disposal. And I'm very, very grateful for that. And I wouldn't dare complain about what's happening to me. Yes, it's unfortunate or it's te- and it's temporary, hopefully. But I could never complain about my life because I feel like I'm so blessed and I'm so grateful to have the loving family, my, my health, and everything else that in life that, you know, you can't put a price tag on. Yeah, well, you've persevered, and it's been amazing where you've where you've been or where you've been where you are now. Uh, yeah, go check her out Robbie Hart H A R T E dot com. Her brand new single comes out the twenty second. You're going to hear it coming up uh, here shortly. But Robbie is a cyber terrorist because over the weekend oh she does goodness. a show. <laughs> a good transition. Oh my goodness, I can't. Uh, I can't. On, on an internet radio station, well, a station out of Canada. You got, like, flagged over the weekend saying that you, you can't post about other artists anymore because of cybersecurity. Wh- what is this? What's going on here? Um, okay, so let me clarify that. So I am a host of a radio show on FM radio station and in, indie radio station, um, sorry, internet radio station that's broadcasted out of Canada. And I post a, week, a weekly flyer to announce who's going to be on the show and the spotlighted artist of the week. And I started getting all of my posts flagged that they were coming back as being against the community standards because of cyber security threats. And I couldn't understand what was going on because all I'm doing is shining a light on my fellow indie artists yeah. and giving them a shout out. You're and advertising the show is what she's yeah, doing. Yeah, so it's, I think there's something at play that has something to do with the fact that the station originates in Canada and it's something about a broadcast issue. So I don't think it's anything personal. But I'm not sure exactly what that play here, but it's, it's very interesting because I get inundated with things from Facebook that are not appropriate by any means. And I can't believe that something that's well-meaning and positive gets flagged for this. But, you know, it's one of those things you can't really do anything about. So I just find another way to share my message. And I'm going to find another way to announce it and keep shouting out those amazing artists who send me their music. It must be something with Canada because I do the same thing and I've never gotten flagged. Yeah, I do think it is. I think it's something to do with Canada and some change over in broadcast guidelines recently. So I think that's what it is. But I haven't gotten a final determination <laughs> yet. But either way, I'm still going to keep doing my show and I'm still going to keep plugging those artists who I think are amazing. So. Yeah, it, it was just funny when I saw it over the weekend. I was like, what? <laughs> Robbie, the nicest person on the planet. She's she's a cyber terrorist now. Watch out. She's she's well, going there's, after there's everybody. One more thing to add to my, pro, to my uh, image. <laughs> exactly. Well, you're up for three Josie Awards, which comes up at the end of October. Uh, you're going to those, right? Because where are those? At the Grand Ole Opry? Those are at the Grand Ole Opry in Nashville, and I'm so honored to be nominated for three awards at the Josie Music Awards. Well, and you were up last year. year. Yeah, this is this is your second year. Last year you came home empty-handed, so maybe this is the year. Well, I can't say I came home empty-handed. I did come back with the experience of being there and being part of the, the show. Oh, yeah. But I didn't win an award. So you're right. I didn't win an award. But you know what? I think any time that your name gets added to a list of incredible artists that are known worldwide, and it, it's just amazing. Like, I just think back, and I think nobody knew who I was a few years ago. 
And I've created this name and this, this brand over the last few years that people know who I am and that my name has been added to these nominations for these award shows. And it's just mind-blowing. And that's, the, that's the Grand Ole Opry. That's incredible. That's yeah. really incredible. That'd be cool. I'd like to go just for that. You know, it, it's amazing. It's an amazing experience. When we talk about the emotions, you know, being in the audience last year and just being part of it. So my husband, Dennis, as you mentioned earlier, he's uh, in the construction field. He's not an artist. And I think a lot of times he doesn't understand what I do. He sees what I do, <laughs> and he sees me going out and gigging and spending lots of time on the computer and on the phone and promoting. But when we were at the Josie Music Awards, and he was seeing the magnitude of the event, he looked at me and he says, I get it now. I get what you do. Nice. Because That's cool. it's yeah. so hard when you see, like, the day-to-day -day of a musician's life and you see them pushing that boulder uphill, you know, constantly. <laughs> it's hard to see the big picture. And then when you see one of those events and you see the scale of it and the, the level of it and you just say, oh, my gosh, I'm part of this. My name is in this in this show on the category or nominated. It's just amazing. It's mind-blowing. Yeah, she, she's coming up. I, wh when is it, like? End of October? It's October, I think it's 23rd. I'm trying to say, I think it's 23rd, yeah, it's, I think I'm going the 21st, 22nd, and the 23rd. Okay. So it's that weekend. Yeah, so I'll have to keep you posted how, how Robbie does definitely. at the Josie Awards. We will definitely keep you posted. Yeah, this year. Well, you talked to our friend Ant over the weekend. How is she doing? Can you give us an update? Yes, I did. And I was so happy to hear from her. Um, you know, I've been thinking about her for the last few weeks, and I know you have as well sharing her updates with everybody. So thank you for doing that. Um, I was just so happy to be able to hear her voice. Yeah. You know, the voice that has comforted us so many times on the radio and made us laugh and smile. Uh, she seems to be on the mend, and she's in a rehab right now where she's getting her strength up, and um, she was able to talk to me for probably 10 minutes. So I was very, very happy to chat with her. Um, she is healing. She is doing much better than she was when you spoke to her, so that's really, really good. Um, and I'm expecting, uh, I'm hoping to see her either this week or next week. I'm going to go visit her. Yeah, because because she's close to you, isn't she? Or an um, hour she's or probably so? about a half an half, half an hour. hour or so away. Yeah, so definitely worth the while to go out there and check her out and you know see her and, and let everybody know how she's doing because she's a dear friend and uh, you know she she's really brightened so many people's day over the years. So yeah, we've been let's to, and I'll let you know how she's doing. Aunt. Yeah, so we'll. Uh, I, I'm, I think I'm going to give her a call this morning and see how she's doing. You know, but, uh, yeah, I'm sure she'd love to hear from you. You know, she gave us a big scare. So, you know, <laughs> and it's just and it's just proof, like that in life, you literally never know what's going to happen. You never know, and that's why you have to do what you love every day. You have to treat people kindly every day. You have to not leave things undone and unsaid because you just never know. Yeah, yeah, life's way too short. But, Follow it's your so dreams. Short. Yeah, and uh, love each other. Be good to each other, people. Uh, that's Absolutely. for sure. Absolutely. You nailed it. You nailed it. That's the most important thing right there. Yeah. I would still pick you. You're a storyteller, Robbie. All of your songs are about something. Tell us about the new one. Well, I would still pick you is that love song. It's, it's really about that relationship that has stood the test of time. And after everything you've gone through, no matter what it was and no matter how long you've been together, that you would still pick that person. You know, a, a relationship at the beginning of time, it's very easy to say, I do and I will forever because things are new and they're fresh and everything is optimistic. But when you've lived a lifetime with somebody or, or a short period of difficult times with somebody and you turn around and you say, I would do it all over again with you, even if I knew that in a few years we were going to hit a bumpy road or even if I had a a fortune teller tell me that this is going to happen, I would still do it over and over again with you because you're still the one that I would pick every time. Yeah, she'd still pick you. And and this song, it's a little different for you, Robbie. I mean, it, well, it's 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 a ballad, but it's not a ballad. It's more of an upbeat song. T tell us, what were you thinking when you wrote this thing or got the music for it? You know, this song has been bouncing around my head for the last few years. And over the past few years, the melody has been the same. The thought has been the same. Um, I don't see it as much of a ballad or a, as a, I can't even say a genre. To me, it's just an ode to that person. It's just it's, it's a love song, but it's 
yeah. it's a love song, but it's upbeat. Exactly. Yeah. It, and it's not like a slow love song. It's like a mid-tempo. So it kind of rolls because it is a mid-tempo. It gives it that, like, rolling. It doesn't, you know, uh, drag. But the thing is, it's dreamy, right? It has that element of that whimsical, dreamy, airy feel to it, which is what people need right now. I think it's really important that people have a song like this where they can celebrate that love. And even if they've been through difficult times or even if they've had a not-so-perfect life together, they would still pick that person. And I think that that says a lot. It says a lot about your relationship. It says a lot about the love and, and the kind of relationship that you have. Yeah, for sure. Still pick you 16 years later. It's a love song that'll sweep you <laughs> off your feet. It's, it's a great song. You're going to hear it here in just a second. Your debut EP, Eye of the Storm, came out in December of 2020. You've hit it hard for almost three years. How are we feeling right now with where we're at? I am incredibly proud of my journey. I am so proud. It, it has been even better than they could have imagined. Yes, there's always opportunity for things to improve in certain areas, but I am so proud of everything I've accomplished as an independent artist who literally nobody knew of, you know, in 2018, nobody knew who I was, 2017, 2018. And now I get airplay, I get interview requests, I get recognition, and my music is out there sharing my stories and my message with people all around the world. And to me, that is the most rewarding part. I get to share my stories that get to uplift people, that get to inspire people, and just have people hum along with my stories. And that is so rewarding. It's an incredible feeling. Um, I can't even put words to it. It's funny because I was talking to another artist recently who uh, wrote a song called Can't Find the Words. And I said, it's so funny. You know, I can write songs. I can, I can, t- I can tell it in the song. But when it comes to talking about how I feel, sometimes I can't find the words. Yeah. It's crazy, but it's an incredible experience. It's an incredible feeling. Um, you know, there was a time that I would sit up till 3 o'clock in the morning or 5 o'clock in the morning sending out the emails furiously to millions of people to get my songs played, and now I'm getting emails from people saying, hey, can you please send me your new song before it comes out? <laughs> and it's just such a shift. It's an incredible feeling. It's, it's just, and when you add to that the fact that I now do this radio show, which I never thought I would ever be doing, where I get to share other people's stories and I get to give other artists their first play. It's just, it's amazing. I'm so grateful for every every opportunity that I've had till now and I'm so proud of my entire journey. Yeah, she's an inspiration to all of us. Go check her out, RobbieHart.com. She's on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, everywhere. Go and follow her and keep up to date with her. Her brand new single, I Would Still Pick You, comes out on the 22nd. You're going to hear it uh, right now. Well, before we let you go, it's September 11th. Where were you on September 11th? Um, first of all, I am sending thoughts and prayers to everybody, everybody who was yeah. affected, anybody, anybody who lost their lives, their family. I'm thinking of every single one of those people right now. Um, I'm from Canada, as you mentioned earlier, and I used to work for Air Canada. And the day of September 11th, I was working in the reservation center, and I got a phone call from a passenger asking me. They were on the phone for some reason, like to call me to change something, and they said, oh, my God, I'm standing outside, and I just saw and explained the scenario that was taking place as it was happening, and I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I thought it had to be a hoax. So everybody on the center ran down to the lobby where they had the big TV screen in the lobby, and they were standing in front of the news, you know, watching it play out on the news, and it was just such a feeling of disbelief that you're in an alternate world watching this. It, It wasn't... It was incredibly surreal. It was so, it was an awful thing to see play out as it was happening and not just once or twice. It was playing over and over and it it was just very heartbreaking to watch. Yeah. Yeah, you'll never forget. Even from Canada, the pain of watching people going through this was just absolutely agonizing. Yeah. It was devastating. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll never forget it. That's for sure. Robbie Hart, go check her out. Robbie Hart, H A R T E dot com. Here is a brand new single. I would still pick you, Robbie. You're an inspiration. Thank you so much for coming on. We always appreciate it. It's always wonderful talking to you. Thank you, Jess. Thank you so much for having me on. And you guys are the first station to receive it. So I'm very, very excited to have you guys play it. Yeah, the first play. Here it is. I would still pick you. It's Robbie Hart. It's Kicks 96.5.